and welcome. Now we begin to approach the Cantor Bernstein theorem, which, in terms of its statement, is relatively intuitive, but has a lot of details, specifically included to consider the case of infinite sets. So for the statement we have, if there are injected mappings f from a to b and g from b to a between any two sets a and b, then there must exist a bijected mapping h between those two sets a and b. So to begin the proof, we just consider the definitions of injected. Namely, namely that since the mapping f from a to b is injected, uh, you have that equal elements get set to equal outputs, but its image is not necessarily all of b. Clearly, you know, it could be set to, sent to a subset of b. Additionally, we have that g is injective. So it's inverse, g inverse, which is well defined, is as we've dis discussed, injective maps have pretty natural bijections. g of b sent to b is an injective mapping onto b, but is only defined on the subset g of b is a subset of a. Namely, the image of the set b under g inside of a. That suggests that we consider the mapping h0 from a to b, which is defined by setting h0 of a is equal to f of a for, ele for every element a within a, but not inside the, the image of b under g. And if, uh, if an element a is in the uh, image of b under g, then we set h0 of a is equal to inverse image of a under g. Uh, this is a well-defined surjective mappings. H0 will clearly cover all of B. Uh, that restricts to injective mappings on A, excluding G of B and G of B itself. However, and there usually are points A1 inside of uh, A1 inside of A, except for G of B, and A2 inside of G of B, for which G of F of A1 is equal to A2, so that F of uh, a1 is equal to g inverse of a2, and you have that the mapping fails to be injected. And the problem kind of lies in the point that in those points, a1 is an element, uh, are all those a1s that are elements of the composition g of f of a except g of b, which is a subset of g of b. Um, if all those points are moved into the domain of the mapping f rather than the domain of the mapping g inverse, that solves. Uh, that problem for such points, but the mapping H0 may still fail to be injective for a similar reason. The reason is that you need to introduce uh, because you can continue iterating this problem forwards. So the solution is to introduce the set of C, which is equal to all of those points A that are not in G of B, unioned with a large union. So we consider all of those points such that any iteration of G of F, so G of F at the N, on the set A, A intersect, uh, A except for G of B, which is a subset of A, and we union over all of those. And we union over all of those, and consider originally all of those points that are A except G of B, then you'll get the subset, then you get the set C, and then all of that will be a subset of A. So it's usually useful to draw a picture here between A and B, and note when, when uh, elements in A except G of B can be set to a problematic domain under g of f for all n. Um, so let's consider what happens once we construct this set c. Since a except g of b is a subset of c, then clearly a except for c is a subset of g of b. So uh, we can now, now we can finally construct our final mapping, which is just borrowing ideas from the beginning, namely that you let the mapping h from a to b be defined by that by h of x equal to f of x for, um, actually, it's probably better to start the other way, that h of x equals a g inverse of x for every x that is in a except for c, which is a subset of a. This is because they will never get sent to a problematic area. These are always well-defined under the inverse g, uh, under g inverse, so this is well-defined. And then for any x in c, you simply let h of x equal to f of x. As noted, g inverse of x is well-defined on the subset a except for c, since g is, is injective. Uh, and then this theorem will now be demonstrated by showing that this mapping uh, just defined as it bijective. It's kind of defined in our construction, but we can prove it more explicitly as follows. 
To demonstrate that it's injective, consider any two points x1, x2, and a. And suppose, and we'll do this by contradiction, suppose to the contrary that h of x1 is equal to h of x2. If x1, x2 are in c, then by definition h of x1 is equal to f of x1, and h of x2 is equal to f of x2, so they're equal. But this is a contradiction since we already assumed that f was injective. Let's suppose instead that they're both outside of C, but they're in, uh, but they're in A. Then, if x1 and x2 are in A except for C, then there are subsets of g of b. Then x1 and x2 are equal to g of y1 and g of y2 for uniquely determined points y1 and y2, since g is, is injective. But by definition, uh, we know that h of x1 is equal to y1 and h of x2 is equal to y2. So y1 is equal to y2, which is a contradiction again. Now let's consider the third case, which is if they are either one of them is in C and one of them is in, not in C, but still in A. Then, then you have h of x1 is equal to f of x1, h of x2 is equal to y2, where y2 is some uniquely identified point in B defined by g of y2 is equal to x2. Since we're assuming that h of x1 is equal to x2, it follows that f of x1 is equal to y2, and hence x2 is equal to g of y2, is equal to g of f of x1. But since x1 is in C, then by the definition of C, either x1 is in A except for g of b, or there's some natural number for which uh, g of f to the n, uh, or for which x1 is in inside the set of g to the f to the n of A except for g of b, uh, and you have it that x2 is in g of f of x1, is a subset of all those numbers k that are natural numbers. But this is a contradiction, clearly, since x2 is inside a except for c. And that shows, by con since we've eliminated all three cases, the h must be injective. To demonstrate that it is surjective, let's consider a point y and b, and let x equal g of y is nominative of a. Well, couple cases for what x can be. If x is in A except for C, then h of x is equal to g inverse of x of y, and we're done, because we know that those are subsets of B. Uh, if instead x is a subset of C, it cannot be the case that g x is a subset of A except for g of B, since uh, x equals g of y is, is an element of g of B, so there has to be some point, some natural number n in the natural, uh, there must be some natural number n for which x is an element of the image of a except for g of b under g of f some number of times n. So x is equal to g of f of x1 uh, for some point x1 and c. But since we're composing them, since g of f of x1 is equal to x is equal to g of y and g is injective, it must be the case that y is equal to f of x1 since x1 is in c. And then by definition, we have h of x1 is equal to f of x1 is equal to y. So this covers every single point in the codomain. So h is surjective, and thereby we have the proof. With that very detailed proof out of the way, we will begin to use it to define a partial order on sets uh, and using natural numbers. And then we will uh, consider some more of Cantor's theorems. Thank you.